previously during the investigation. I'm Kaysen, Forrest Kaysen. Thomas, did you see Nick here? I, 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 no. I, uh, when I got here, he was already like this. What are you doing? Get out of the way! I'll do it! George, stay back. She's trying to speak. No! It could be! Nick! Oh, please, no! He got us good this time, Zach. Oh, I can't believe it, man. Now that's heavy. Me neither. When did Becky stop coming to work? I think it was like from the day Anna was killed, man. Yeah, 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 that's right. She was, she was totally depressed about something. Quint called for her to let us know she wasn't coming in for work. She must have been totally in shock, the poor thing. So you took the twins along to cheer her up. That's right, hon. If only I knew it would be like this, I'd have spent more time talking to her. You told me about a special secret between your children and Becky. Yes, of course. What about it? It seems Becky handed them an item before she was killed. Any idea what that might be? Now that you mention it, they had a box about this size, which they said was very important. That's it. I'd like to talk to them about this in person. Where are the boys now? They went out, actually, with Mr. Casey. They mentioned going to the community center today, hon. There is plenty of space to run around over there. Kaysen? Do you know him well? Oh yeah, he's a good guy. He always brings us gifts from his road trips. The kids love him, so we let him take them out every once in a while. You know, for a little quality time with the missus. <laughs> okay, I understand, but the situation calls for urgency. I'll go and look for them myself, and if they come home without running into me, could you let us know? Sure, of course. I'll contact the department. Where is it? Where? Where could it be? Her dress? Oh, Sally! Sally? Anna's mother? She's acting up again! She's been like that ever since she heard the news. What exactly is she doing? Got no idea. But I guess she's in like, you know, shock or something. The way I look at it, her daughter's death hasn't really sunk in the right way. Totally, man. I feel sorry for her. Come on, let's go. Lily, have you seen Anna's dress, dear? I can't find it anywhere. Isaac and Isaiah aren't here. They're apparently out with Kaysen. Let's go look for them. With Kaysen? Sounds like a long story. Any ideas where to start looking? Lily told me where they went. No problem. Today, we're stuck here having to search for lost children. They're not lost. We're the ones who are lost. And so we are, Emily. Zach, we may as well have fun if we're getting lost. You sure know how to take your time in a time like this.
two people have been murdered in our town. And now two young children are at the center of it all. I just can't come to grips with it yet. Crime will happen wherever there are people. And that's why we have our jobs. It might be easier for you because you don't live here. These were people that I knew that were killed. And the murderer might be someone who lives here in this town. It's really depressing. I know. But someone has to bring this murder to justice. You're right, I know. But, oh, Agent York, sometimes I just think I'm not really cut out to be a cop. Not true, Emily. You have the potential to be a superb law enforcer. You can be emotional at times, but you also possess what's most important. I do? What do you mean? What do you think? A sense of justice. Justice? <laughs> I must admit, I I'm surprised to hear such a... Say this, such an obvious answer. I thought you'd say something else. Obvious or not, I joined the FBI in order to do what's right. And that's what's important. I understand, but still, you seem... <sighs> I'm sorry. I, I need some time to think. Whatever do you want to think about? Justice. I want to think about justice. Zach, she's quite the philosopher, isn't she? Then again, death makes everyone a philosopher. give Diane a box. It wasn't that heavy. We took it to the art gallery and gave it to Diane. Is that all Becky gave you? Um, just when we were leaving to take the box to Diane, Becky called us back. She handed us something. It was small and round. She told us to keep it safe in our pocket and give it to Diane. And then you met Carol on your way? Yep. I took the round thing out of my pocket, and we looked at it. And then she talked to us. 
We told her that we were on an errand for Becky. She said she'd do it for us. But we told her no, because Becky asked us, not her. We promised Becky to do it ourselves. So Becky did entrust the locket to them. And now Carol has it. Right, Kason? Huh? You were in the room when Carol took the locket back from Diane. I saw you with Diane in the art gallery that day. Well, yeah, I, 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 I was there in the room, but, but I was only chatting with Diane. Oh, then Carol burst in, all angry looking. While Carol and Diane had their talk, I, I just sat there like a frog. Yeah, so Carol took the locket from Diane, but that has nothing to do with me, right? Uh, yes, I believe so. But from this instant, you are now a key witness in this case. I'm afraid you can't leave town until you hear from me. What? Can you do that? This is all starting to sound a little like Alice in Wonderland. Which makes you Humpty Dumpty. Huh? huh? Isaac and Isaiah, thank you. I think I'll be able to keep my promise with Becky thanks to you too. How is Becky? Is she getting better? She'll come and help out at our store again, won't she? She'll come and play with us again, won't she? Boys, about Becky. Uh, that's right. Uh, um. Becky is almost totally better now, but I don't think she'll be able to come and see you. I was told by Becky to keep this a secret, but she's actually a goddess of the forest, just like Anna. I think she's going to be in the forest with Anna for a while. Cool! We'll keep this a secret then, too. Wow! That's why Anna and Becky are such good friends. <laughs> okay, okay, Willie. You're happy too, aren't you? Zach, I hope Emily doesn't end up as a forest goddess too. Okay then, Zach. Let's go over what we found out recently about the case. First, Diane, the owner of the art gallery. She was out drinking with Nick Cormack in a bar on the night Anna died. Nick confirmed this, and so she had an alibi. But then we have what Nick's wife Olivia told us. According to Olivia, Nick and Diane not only went to the bar, but also went somewhere else that night. Do you remember where that was, Zach? That's right, the art gallery. Before entering the gallery, Diane looked back towards Olivia, almost as though she saw Olivia in the dark. Nick's behavior has also become more suspicious by the day. If Olivia is correct, then he is heavily involved in this case, but we have no conclusive evidence of that at the moment. The only thing we can say for sure is that Nick's whereabouts are unknown at the time of Becky's murder. He has no alibi for the crime, but that fact alone means nothing. So who was it that called Thomas to report trouble at Becky's place? We found her bitten off tongue, 
a massive amount of red seeds that poured out of the blood, and an inverted peace symbol like the one seen at the site of Anna's murder. From the similarities, one can deduce that Anna's killer killed Becky. We also found one other important piece of evidence in Becky's room. Can you remember what that was, Zach? That's right. We found a sketchbook in Becky's room. She had apparently written a letter to her sister Diane. It revealed that Becky took a locket from Anna's body at the crime scene. She also admitted to borrowing a pair of Diane's stiletto heel shoes. So Miss Stiletto Heels was Becky. There was something else at the end of the letter. It said that she handed the locket and stiletto heel shoes to someone. Do you remember who, Zach? That's right, Zach. And from what Isaac and Isaiah told us, Carol offered to take the items to Diane, but the twins refused. They gave them to Diane themselves as they had promised. For some reason, Carol wanted the locket. She ended up storming into the gallery to take it from Diane. And when Carol took the locket from Diane, Casey just happened to be there. Is Casey involved in this? Or was he just there by coincidence? I wonder what's so special about the locket, too. Why did Carol want it so badly? The questions are mounting. Come to think of it, the first witness has no alibi for Becky's death. We checked the phone records and his call definitely came from her house. Is it possible he attacked Becky and then called us for the scene? But everyone is suspicious one way or another. What should we do next? Okay, who's the most suspicious? but there is someone else at the center of this. That's right. Becky's sister and Carol's enemy, linked to both Nick and Kason, the elegant owner of the art gallery. Zach, that's our next move. We'll start with Diane. So, you want to find out everything there is to know about Diane? That's right. There's just too many things that we don't know. First, we need more intel about the relationship between Nick and Diane. How? Nick and Diane meet every night at the bar. Let's use that. George, we'll need you to stake out the gallery. What do you mean? Wait in the parking lot of the art gallery and Anywhere other than the bar. Right? Emily, you take the diner. Wait for Nick and tail him to the bar, too. As with George, if he goes anywhere else, then you let me know. Okay. Thomas, you keep a watch on the inside the bar. Yes, yes, I will. I'll be waiting in the parking lot of the bar. Once Nick and Diane are together, I will follow them wherever they go. What time do they usually show up, Thomas? Around the same time. Usually between 22 and 2300. Then at that time we do it, boys and girls. <laughs>